In space news this week, going gaga over Gaia in a black hole bounty in the middle of our Milky Way National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fisik is, is in Montreal. Andrew, good morning, sir. Uh, didn't mean to startle you. Let's begin with the secrets of the Milky Way that the European Space Agency's Gaia spacecraft is sharing with the world. What are you learning? Well, this is really, uh, you could consider this as the ultimate uh, travel map to the Milky Way galaxy. So any future spaceship, maybe a la Star Trek, would use a map like this to really know where exactly all the stars are in very precise three-dimensional uh, graphics. So this map is a, uh, that we've created over the Milky Way is the most detailed map of our home galaxy ever created. And it's we're showing viewers right now, Andrew, the actual pictures of the Milky Way. We don't uh, look at maps in this case when we have the actual pictures. What do you think is the most significant new information we're learning? Well, I, I think what is really stunning is that they found uh, streams or rivers of very fast-moving stars in different regions of the Milky Way. And these are very telling because it says that these stars come from outside of the Milky Way. They're alien stars. And uh, we think what this means is that uh, our galaxy has been embedding, has been drawing gravitationally stars that wander too close, small satellite galaxies that have been absorbed by our Milky Way. So Ooh. what this is really saying in the end is that our galaxy is actually a galactic cannibal. A galactic cannibal. We have the most amazing things during this segment each Sunday, and now we have... Galactic Cannibals here on CTV News Channel, thanks to Andrew Fazekas. Andrew, I want to talk also as well, the uh, black holes that we spoke of a minute ago, the ever-puzzling space oddity, another uh, discovery, uh, discovery of a cluster of them, it seems, in the middle of our galaxy now. That's right. So if we look at the downtown core, the hub of our galaxy, we think that there are like a beehive buzzing with thousands of black holes. These are uh, uh, formed from the end product of very large stars. When they die, they form these black holes. This is a region of space where nothing can, can, uh, can come out of it. Even light is bent back on itself. And we think there are thousands of these all buzzing around an even larger uh, black hole, a super massive black hole that's the size about 5 billion times the mass of our, of our own sun. So these smaller ones are all like bees buzzing around this hive. And uh, we think that there may be upwards uh, of maybe tens of thousands mm. that are, are waiting to be discovered. Uh, we seem to gain so much information about black holes routinely. They still remain a mystery. Is it because in part of what you've just described? Yeah, I mean, the problem with black holes is that they are black. And of course, the, 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 the darkness of space makes it difficult to detect. So how we find them is when they're orbiting a normal star and they're basically uh, voraciously eating off the gas off of the other star. So they're eating up, gobbling up the nearby star. As that star gets gobbled up, the black hole shoots out uh, a, a beam of x-rays, and that's what we can detect. It's sort of the last cry of help from oh. that star as it's being gobbled up by its neighboring black hole. Very vivid. National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fisakis, always a pleasure. Fascinating conversations with you each Sunday. Look forward to doing it again next week. Clear skies.